All right. So with that, just a quick uh, overview of the agenda. Before we jump into sort of uh, the, the Trust Arc and Privia um, solutions and answers, I wanted to talk a little bit about why do data inventories matter in general? Why are they important? This topic comes up a lot. I think it's, it's one of the most common uh, issues practitioners face, but the question of why isn't always clear. So just figured it'd be useful for the uh, viewers here to be able to listen and, and hear my, uh, my perspective there. All right, so why do they matter? Um, critically, they streamline privacy compliance obligations, right? Knowing where your data means that when somebody says delete my data, export my data, uh, you know, building a retention period, et cetera, you really need to know what you have to be able to do those things. It's really hard to remove somebody's information if you don't know what database system, et cetera, you're going into. Um, so data inventories are one way where you can actually take stake of uh, where things are. And look, it's really not that different than at home. You need to know which uh, drawer your socks are in or you won't be able to get your socks. Um, so same thing here. In addition, um, many people are familiar with ROPAs. If you're not, that's a record of processing activity. That was introduced under Article 30 of GDPR. Uh, but there are certainly other laws that have started to comment uh, and opine on the need for inventories and taking stake of what data you have um, directly, such as you know GDPR, California law, um, other laws in places like Brazil, Thailand, Vietnam. But ultimately, because of some of the commonalities of privacy laws, which, by the way, if you're not familiar, many privacy laws, um, the genesis of them is actually from the OECD guidelines, which, which are uh, multiple decades old and far older than GDPR require things, like I said, like deletion, export, et cetera. And to really do those things properly, you need them. So uh, while it's directly called out in a number of laws that I mentioned here, there are lots of other laws where it's basically inferred that you need to know where your data is to fulfill those types of obligations. Um, similarly, risk management, inventories help assess what is being processed for your organization, which helps you understand what actually is at play here. Um, if you are a banking institution, the type of information you hold, is probably significantly higher risk than, um, you know, if you are a widget provider, perhaps, and all you're selling is widgets and the only information you maintain is uh, name, you know, billing address, et cetera. Um, so really understanding what you have and, and what kind of uh, requirements you need around that data is critical, not just for those privacy obligations that I mentioned earlier, but also for things like infosec planning, right? Do you need state-of-the-art encryption if all you're holding is, um, you know, somebody's country of origin, something to think about as an example. And so having these inventories will let you really think through what you need from info, InfoSec perspective with the InfoSec teams, of course, right? That's not, never done in a vacuum, but inventories are not just a privacy thing, I think is really the critical component here. They're really about understanding what kind of data you have uh, for a variety of purposes, um, sort of as an extension of this InfoSec point, uh, strategic and budget planning, Depending on how much information you have, your privacy needs, your security needs, your uh, DevOps, uh, et cetera, needs might be totally different. Um, and then last but not least, customer obligations, sales support. Um, more and more clients of TrustArc, and I suspect Privia, but even my colleagues are talking about how RFPs have just become the norm. Uh, it's funny, I was actually at a uh, carnival for uh, with, my, with my daughter this weekend, and uh, somebody came up from another software company uh, that's in a totally different space and was like, hey, you know, we've, we've been getting a lot of RFPs about AI. So this is just happening a lot. We're all kind of living in a world where vendor due diligence, second party, third party, fourth party diligence is becoming the norm. Um, same thing, InfoSec and privacy questionnaires, annual um, assessments of your vendors. These things all really require you to kind of know what you have, how you secure it, et cetera. And then, you know, critically, online disclosures need to happen, right? For companies that use subprocessors, i.e. a common or e.g. a common example is SaaS companies, right? Oftentimes, software as a service companies might be using an ecosystem of providers such as cloud hosting providers, uh, third parties that might help with things like marketing support, sales support, et cetera. Um, you have obligations often to either notify your clients um, if you want to use a new one and get their consent under, for example, GDPR, or going through something called general authorization under Article, Article 28 of GDPR. If you're going through general authorization, you're typically obligated to publicly disclose who you're using, what you're using them for, and then provide at least you know, a, a fixed amount of notice period in advance. Many, many companies use 30 days. Um, so taking inventory of your systems is really critical to be able to do those things um, and do them well. <clears throat> so problem statement. Um, creating comprehensive inventories can be hard, right? It's hard and it's important for a lot of reasons, as I said. 
Because really, you shouldn't just be having a privacy team taking one inventory, a security team taking another, but that sometimes happens. Um, and legacy methods are really no longer viable. Um, thinking back to GDPR prep in a prior life, you know, 2016, 2017, we started out in Excel files. Many of us did, actually. Um, and those types of legacy methods don't necessarily work in the complex world that we live in, where people have ecosystems of vendors and many and many different use cases. And uh, can't go without saying that, you know, the, the Gartner stat has continued to kind of percolate and, and, and be a critical data point, which is that by the end of this year, Gartner predicted that 75% of the world would be covered by modern privacy laws. That means that taking stake of what data you have in the complexity of the ecosystem means that it's not like it used to be, right? You can't just do the old manual data inventory creation the same way. Or you can, but it significantly prolongs the process. Um, it, it often is static, which is a problem, meaning it doesn't change, obviously, because it's a file. Um, these methods often rely on a lot of what I call chasing, right? You're chasing engineering, you're chasing product, you're chasing procurement. Uh, it's highly manual. You have to regularly update it. Some of this doesn't really work in the modern world for, for modern organizations, particularly as you go on your maturity journey. Um, lack of automation impedes the impedes flow, um, and streamlining is really important. So a couple of a couple of notes on that. Um, one of the reasons why I joined TrustArc was because I was a TrustArc client, and our CEO really wanted somebody to be a voice of the customer from within. And I had a lot of experience in this specific area. Like I said, in 2016, I was using Excel files. By the way, I was very happy with it in 2016. It seemed to check the box. It seemed to build a ROPA. I wasn't thinking about the term data inventory, but it was, it was checking the GDPR Article 30 box, right? It was, it was meeting the criteria. Um, a friend of mine, our, our former CISO at the time, said, hey, we need to do something better. Um, and so at the time, I went to a, uh, a, you know, a competitor of TrustArc because they were getting a little buzz. I tried them out. Um, I found the experience to be really time consuming. The on-ramping time was really challenging. And by the way, the engineering and product teams were really unhappy with the user experience from their end as contributors. That led me to wonder, what do we need? What kind of user testing do I need to do better? That led me to TrustArc's tool, which had a better flow. It was more um, user-friendly for engineering and product teams who had to provide inputs, um, et cetera. But over time, even, even using that tool, I started to wonder, you know, how do we make this more automated? How do we make this faster? Because, you know, as you notice, right, as you're updating your program, if there's a security in investigation, et cetera, you really need to, you really need to know where all the data is across a cross section of areas. And unfortunately, for the most part, many companies are pulling from their inventory solution, pulling from a DevOps solution, pulling from a security solution, and trying to piece it all together. And, mm -hmm. you know, Kristen and I have been thinking long and hard about what can we do to simplify that experience for folks? because some of that doesn't really work when you're in a rush, when you have a big organization, et cetera. Um, I also spoke to a number of colleagues about what do you do during privacy planning, during incident response? How do you know where your data is, right? And I spoke to some folks who had been using data discovery tools, and I heard some horror stories ranging from vaporware to uh, one year long implementations to eye-watering multi six figure fees. Um, and that just didn't work. Right, so Kristen and I thought long and hard about what can we do at TrustArc to make this better? And then we also partnered up with Privia to think about what we could do to really make this a mature holistic solution. And by the way, one or two point solutions is actually remarkably better than what I've seen on the market, which is some folks using three or four disjointed point solutions to make this work. So with that, I'm really excited about what TrustArc and Privia have to offer. And I'd like to hand it to Kristen to talk about the TrustArc component first. Awesome, thank you, Val. So I'm the product manager for the data inventory hub. And as Val said, it can be really cumbersome to populate a data inventory record. It's the first step in the process that our customers take in order to understand um, what records are being used, where their data sits. And then from downstream from there, until you get that part done, um, you can't leverage the rest of the system, such as creating business process records, understanding your risk, um, and creating the reporting that you need to provide um, to show your your program um, your program's privacy posture. So, real quick, before we jump into how we've solved for this problem, um, I want to do a quick overview of the data inventory hub and what it is, and then um, and then we'll provide an overview of how we've partnered with Privia and the integration that we provide to automate um, this challenge. So the data inventory hub, it's our data inventory and 
a ropey tool, which is used to populate your system third party and organization records. You can put information about what data is being collected and processed um, into these records. You can analyze the risk of each of these records. Uh, you can run reports based on um, organization and see which part of your organization has the most risk. And then you can also um, generate Article 30 reporting and provide that to auditors to make sure that, um, that your program is in compliance. So all of this um, really requires a lot of work unless you pair it with automation. So as Val mentioned, originally he started off in spreadsheets and you know a lot of customers over the last, I'd say five to 10 years have transitioned from spreadsheets over to um, a system like the Data Inventory Hub or the Data Inventory Hub. And now we're taking it a step further with our integration and automation approach, which uh, I'll go through on the next slide. Um, which showcases how we can automate all of this work for you so that this isn't your full-time job and that you can focus on other areas of uh, your privacy program without having to manually touch um, all of your data inventory records and business process records. So on the left side, we have um, a few different in-house um, solutions that we've created to help streamline um, your data inventory record creation. We've got a record exchange solution with 400 pre-created records. Uh, we have a third-party discovery solution where we scan your um, organization's websites. We have some AI autofill technology and an integration library with connectors. But what I'm most excited for is our new partnership with Privia. They have a really unique approach to um, scanning your uh, code base and understanding what data is being processed, if AI is being used to process that data. And then downstream, we're able to automate the creation of your data inventory records, um, indicate if AI is being used to process that data and flag risk and recommend assessments to re remediate that risk. Um, and it really just streamlines the entire process so that you know, you don't have to rely on spreadsheets. You don't have to spend, um, you know, weeks to months in the data inventory trying to populate this information. It's really, really easy to use and it streamlines and eliminates that manual work for you. So I'm going to pass it over now to Privia to go into more detail um, on our integration and all the benefits of their solution. And you know what? I touched on this a little bit, but Again, some of the benefits are streamlining inventory creation, um, being able to auto detect uh, AI usage, and then automating risk and reporting as well. And I did just wanna highlight something that Kristen mentioned. Um, the pre-populated records is, is huge. I think it's one of, the, one of the things that I'm most excited about on the TrustArc side. Um, you know, there are common systems and they're commonly used in similar ways across um, most organizations. Us giving you a leg up by kind of pre-populating that or letting you pick from uh, pre-built records should save a ton of time because, you know, it's ultimately not that uh, unique if a company is using a certain CRM that we all know of or a certain cloud hosting solution. There are common ones that many companies use. And so making that easier once we detect those um, is, is a game changer, in my opinion. Awesome. All right. With that, we'll hand it over to Privia. Hi, everyone. Uh, so over the next uh, few slides, we, we're going to understand a little bit better the, the code-based uh, data discovery uh, at the beginning from a zoom-out perspective and then drilling down into the details. Okay, so let's look at it for, from a zoom-out perspective from uh, outside of the stratosphere. So three basic and, and, and simple uh, uh, stages for our solution. The first, is simply scanning uh, the lines of code. We are connecting uh, in a very sim a simple way, non-intrusive, without any agents, into the Git or to the place where the code is stored and do a scanning. The scanning is taking a few minutes, up to a few hours at uh, the, the worst case scenario. Nothing related to the days or to the months of uh, manual uh, questionnaires and uh, all the, those other uh, pieces that Val mentioned before. Uh, the second stage is that we are using the code uh, to identify keywords, patterns, flows, 
PII, SPI, among other things. And the nice thing about it, and, and again, we're going to touch, uh, touch a little bit uh, further into that over the next couple of slides, is that we're not just pulling a list of endless amounts of uh, data points or issues, we're also providing the flow and the context of what we're finding. So the data is being scanned, is being tagged, it's being categorized, and based on that, we are actually assessing uh, the risk. And one, one thing I really like about the previous solution is that it's super flexible. So there is an on-prem and a host version of the code scanning, depending on people's kind of security needs. So I think that's sort of a great add to the, to the feature portfolio. Thank you. Okay, let's uh, deep dive a little bit uh, more into the details. The, the first step is, uh, as I mentioned before, is that we're, we're scanning uh, the code. Uh, we can scan uh, practically uh, everything, uh, legacy system, cloud-based application, third-party integration, and, and so forth. What does it take for the customer, for us to do the scanning? Practically nothing. Again, an access to, to the Git, or we have even uh, other alternatives like allowing people to uh, send us uh, zip files or, or something like that, as simple as that, and the scanning happening. Uh, Based on the scanning, we are automatically uh, identifying and categorizing the information. What can we find in the scanning? Uh, PII, sensitive information, but not just that. Third parties, integrations, number one. Uh, very hot topic these days, we can identify the usage or the presence of AI or ML models. Uzi will touch bases on that uh, over the next slide. Uh, PII, I've mentioned before, we can map uh, the, the connected the data stores and the API uh, interfaces. Again, all of that, you're getting that from a few minute scan, which is uh, completely non-intrusive. Uh, the nice thing about it is that everything is happening and based on our, on our own uh, logic and internal models, we're not just extracting the data, we are classifying the data based on the context and this is a, a very important uh, component, as we all know, in the reporting, in, in the risk assessment that, that we need to provide. So we're giving you both the data and the context and the classification of the data all at once in a fairly simplified way. Uh, and, and, and again, within a few minutes. Uh, what we're getting out of that, I think that uh, Val did uh, a great job already stealing my bullet here but you are saving tons of time, tons of time. Again, th that's the first part. The second part is that unlike the traditional models or methods, sorry, that are uh, very static, leave aside the time that it takes to do all those uh, questionnaires, think about it. The second that you ended the process, one day after that, you're not uh, updated or accurate anymore because things are happening especially in today's world where data is so dynamic and so many things are being created on a daily basis. The nice thing about the code scanning approach is that it's always updated. It's, it's a very dynamic method to, to, to handle your data, which is completely the opposite of the static mode of the, the previous methods. Uh, saving time, we've mentioned it already. Think about it again, few minutes, up to few hours. And also a common, uh, common truth, instead of people giving it their own interpretation, you're getting the data, you use the source code, which is let's look at it as the ultimate truth. And by that, you have everything in front of you. And all of this information is eventually being compared uh, to uh, provide you a proper pro a proactive a privacy risk management. Uh, the information is being compared or matched with all the relevant and popular regulations, and you're getting your status and the issues that you need to fix versus such regulations. Okay. So I would like to elaborate a bit about what uh, Asaf just uh, described. So after we collect all the uh, data, the next step is to understand the data flow. What is the sources of the data, where it goes, what from source to think. So this is one of the things that we provide as part of our code scanning solution, we understand the data lineage. So you can see a few examples in the, on the slide. For example, going from project to a data store to a, a, a third party, 
from uh, and, and vice versa. So we provide all this information in a very simple way. And this give a lot of value uh, in the privacy and, and the security program that you need to manage to your solution. So we categorize all the, the, the front end and that collect data, the data store, like database, like AWS services, like the NumDB, S3 bucket, and others. And we also understand, categorize all the use, all the all the things like a, a, a third parties, and even using a, a machine learning on AI a model. More than that, because we provide the data flow. A, a customer are able, user are able also to understand if there is some kind of data that is derived from different sources. So for example, some a, a user use some kind of a, a machine learning model based on the, on the user behavior on the website and based on that, they, they uh, build a profile. So the profile is the data that is derived from uh, sources that was collect were collected and, and, but this is the new data set that is generated uh, as part of the data flow. The next topic that I would like to elaborate is about the AI and the machine learning model. Now it's become a very hot topic, uh, in particular because of the new, uh, the new solution like uh, in generative AI, like uh, ChatGPT uh, and MidJourney and others. And there are many challenges related to, to, to the generative AI. So we are familiar with the regular challenges like in machine learning and the automatic profiling regulation and GDPR, but the generative AI brought additional challenges, just to name a few, because the generative AI is based on some kind of randomness and, 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 and it might have some kind of hallucination. Uh, you need to validate also the data that it generates, not only the data that you insert. Uh, so there are many challenges related to generative AI, and, and, when, and the main challenge is the fact that nowadays a developer uh, integrates uh, generative AI as part of other solutions, so they can work directly with the GPT, Cloud, and, and others. It's very easy to do the, the integration, and, and one of the things that we provide, we are able to detect and classify any integration with generative AI or was classical machine learning model. And then we can provide all the context of the usage of this uh, specific generative AI. For example, where is the data is coming from? What is the type of the data that is shared with generative AI? What is the purpose of this specific repository? In this case, we are using our own large language model to classify the purpose of each project. So we give a lot of context and understanding and based on that, a user are now much are able to do a much easier way to 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 do the uh, the risk assessment based on the EU AI Act and the NIST AI RMF uh, framework. So, so similar to the uh, uh, generative AI, we are also able to detect integration uh, with third parties. Third by third parties, we mean like AppSpot, Mixpanel, Salesforce. And, and others. So we are able to classify integration of third parties, the data that is shared with third parties, the purpose of the project, the owner of the project, the, 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 the owner in the engineering that is owner, the project that shared the data with third party. We raise alerts when we find something which might raise some kind of a risk. If there is a several integration with third parties, if there is a risk associated with the data that is shared with the third party, all of the of the above is, is done automatically and it's part of our uh, solution. More than that, we now uh, in work in progress. We also uh, uh, working on it, adding an uh, additional uh, angle, which is the no code, the, the shadow IT of third party. And this is something that we are now working on and, to, and uh, together with the code will provide a, an holistic view of all the, the data and all the, 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 the third parties that a, a, a customer use. If, if I may use it just to add, what we're trying to build is something that will not just give you a pile of endless amounts of uh, findings and issues, which we all know it's, it's a common problem in, in today's world, right? Everybody are 
a little bit uh, tired of getting now uh, 15,000 uh, different issues, false positive, false negative, uh, and so forth. But to try to add an additional context to the data that you're getting from the scanning, uh, like the classification that uh, Uzi mentioned, like severity of the issues that we found, like the flow of the data and understanding the context of the data rather than just giving the data itself. So this is one of the, the main pillars of uh, what we were building over the last uh, couple of months. Thank you. Yes, yes. And on top of it, we provide an option to, to, to explore and ask questions about the data that uh, you process in your repository, that you store in your data store or you use in the AI in the, or in the third parties. So you get a, a very good and convenient uh, way to, to, to manage and, 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 to, and to manage and to reduce the risk of your organization. All right. So when I was, you know, before I joined TrustArc, I dreamed of a world where during instant response or privacy planning, I could go into one repository and type in, you know, if folks have been involved in planning or incident response, oftentimes you're not necessarily thinking about holistic management, but about a certain data set or a certain category. Let's just let's just talk about incident response for a minute. If if somebody told you that they on the incident on security team that they received an alert for system X, let's call that Microsoft Azure or something, right? I wanted to be able to type in Microsoft Azure into something and see a full view of what the potential impact could be to you know my former employer, right? And when I came here, I was like, I want to I want to make sure that that exists because people really need that. Oftentimes during planning or during instant response, you need to work quickly and you need to be able to query in a number of different ways. And I think the, the ability to integrate TrustArc with Privia really provides that in a, in a pretty incredible way. Um, like I mentioned earlier, I had researched quite a bit about what folks are doing in the data discovery space as I joined TrustArc. And to me, this is one of the most elegant um, and integrated solutions that I have seen. Uh, via API and user interfaces, um, you can use these tools seamlessly and you can do just that, which is, which is you can dynamically see what kinds of data you have and you can export it into all the different records that you might need. You can manage your vendors. Uh, it's really a tremendous opportunity and I'm super excited about it. I think that's um, it, unless any other folks from TrustArc or Privia have anything else they wanna add here. Yeah, I think one more thing, if you're interested in seeing a demo of Privia or the Data Inventory Hub, um, you can reach out to us and we can coordinate a time to do that. Um, we're really excited again about this partnership. So thank you so much. We are also extremely excited. This is one of those cases where one plus one is actually greater than two. So uh, <laughs> thank you very much. Awesome. Thank you, everyone. Thanks, folks. Bye. Thank you.